Climate change uh, has affected um, my family in, in, uh, in extreme ways. Um, my loved ones are in on the west coast that is quite, quite literally on fire. Um, estuaries that I visited when I was a kid um, are now considered dead zones. Um, because of uh, chemical fertilizers and um, uh, pesticide runoff from farms and because of climate change. Um, and so it's important to get the word out and diffuse this information uh, to legislators um, so that they can uh, take action. Because if um, industries and, and corporations are allowed to continually destroy our planet um, uh, if they're allowed to do it it's just going to get worse exponentially worse uh, really fast hey, hi i'm julia uh, i live in berlin with my two kids emmett and althea um, worry about you know what kind of storms they'll be going through in the future what um you know what just what the what major changes are going to go and happen to our landscape within their lifetimes, within my lifetime as well. Um, and I just hope that the state can take our kids' futures into account when they make policy for the future. Hi, my name's Wendy. Uh, this is Sylvan. This is my I'm husband, Alex. Alex. We're the Gellers. Uh, we live here in Montpelier. Um, I'm from the Mad River Valley originally. Uh, Alex grew up a lot there too. Um, and this is our one and only uh, child so far. And uh, the one thing that um, we would like to share uh, is, you know, given the situation with climate change, we don't really know if we're going to be able to have two um, responsibly or not, uh, given the, the state of things. Um, do you want to share? Yeah, I think. You know, we all know it, but um, one of the biggest factors in climate change is how many people there are on the earth. And we had our one, and uh, given the impact that every person has and uh, the practices that we uh, exercise around climate change, um, one more is just more carbon. Um, with that said, we hope that we all consume more carbon uh, instead of putting it in, in the atmosphere as a family. Um, but that said, I'd say the biggest thing that um, our legislators can do is support electrification um, and uh, clean generation of that electricity. Um, also reducing consumption. So insulation, you know, it's, it's our biggest, you know, short of uh, vehicle traffic and transportation that is uh, by far and away the biggest uh, emitter is home heating in Vermont. Yep. And supporting weatherization, uh, though very hard, is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And then once you get there, um, you know, transitioning out, um, you know, oil furnaces or uh, things of that nature to heat pumps and efficient heating. Yep. 
and revitalizing the downtown areas to facilitate folks to be able to, to live there and live a more uh, local existence. Uh, it's pretty tough when you can't afford to live in town and you have to be pretty car dependent, uh, especially in our more rural locations. So I think those would be the things that we would encourage folks to try to work on. Um. My name is Sarah Green. Uh, I live in Montpelier, Vermont, and one thing that's being impacted that I love um, by climate change is like my hopes of living in a big city in the future. I think Vermont has to act fast and now if we want to stop climate change because we can't keep waiting. It's happening now. <laughs> you know, it's very tough because when I get older, there might not be a place where we live because of climate change. That's it. My name is Mary, and I'm actually from Oregon, so I know that I'm not one of your voters yet, but, and I, but I have five siblings and many nieces and nephews that live in New England. And also, you're probably aware of all the fires we're dealing with on the West Coast. So I'm actually, for the first time this year, talking about being a climate refugee and thinking about the need to move to northern New England, possibly, because of the fires on the West Coast. And I'm not sure there's going to be any good place to live. This is what I'd like you to know as legislators, without us understanding that every possible action that we can do to reduce carbon emissions um, is essential for us to survive and for our grandchildren to survive. Hi, I'm Emma from Montpelier and expecting a kiddo this upcoming year. And my kiddo's not even born yet and I'm already worried about climate change so yeah do ask everyone to take real measurable action and um, yeah we need to take action like immediately as quickly as possible not push it out a year or two so that that's my big priority thanks for your work Hello, my name is Usnia Granger and I live in Plainfield, Vermont. Uh, I was born and raised here and a message that I feel is important and would like to share with um, the Vermont's leaders is um, just how urgent this crisis is. It is global, it's everywhere, it affects absolutely everything that we have going on and um, the urgency is the, is, the, is the part that speaks the loudest to me is that we need to take as much action as quickly as possible. Thanks for your time. Well, hey, this is Andy and Marina and Cosmo, and we live um, in Albany, Vermont, in the Northeast Kingdom. And we have a farm there, and we've been farming for over a decade. And um, I gotta say, even in my short time in this career or profession, I've seen immense change from, you know, back in 2010 when I began. Um, and whatever we can do um, to keep, you know, a hard job, a hard thing, growing food for our community, um, as easy as we can, the better. And that's for sure, um, you know, addressing climate change. Even this year, the, the, um, on the farm, the spruce trees aren't taking this, these dry seasons. Mm -hmm. They're just, they're dying, you know, because they need the water and they can't find it, you know. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, and we sugar, and I've been thinking about, you know, I don't know if as he gets older, he's going to be able to sugar with us, make maple syrup, um, just as the weather shifts and springs are different, you know, hopefully, but I, I worry about that. I'm not really super in the know about all the details, but I think some pretty drastic measures have to be taken. No baby steps, no you know, messing around, it, it needs to be serious. It's already, you know, too late, so we can't just start, like, cutting back. I think it's, like, a, some pretty huge changes, and I'm open to changing my lifestyle for that, you know, and I think we need leadership around it, not just a few people who make changes in their personal lives. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well said. Yeah. Thank you. Great, thank you.
My name's Kathy Heffernan. I'm actually from Maine. I have four children and pretty soon seven grandchildren. Um, so of course I'm very worried about them and their future. But I can speak to one recent incident for us. We have horses and chickens and a small farm. And last year we could not find any hay in New England, really. We looked all over for hay. And um, because of the drought the previous summer, everybody was out of hay. And we were importing from New York, I believe. Um, so it was sort of a desperate situation for farmers and people with animals. Um, it cost a fortune to import hay, and the hay was poor quality. So, you know, that's something we can't just fix. You know, you can't bring rain when we need it. We can't bring sun when we need it and to grow vegetables and hay. And so, you know, I think farms are really going to suffer, which is, of course, very important <laughs> for us to have. <laughs> So that was my local experience, I would say. Hi, my name is Nancy. Um, I live in Heartland, Vermont, and this is my granddaughter, Ivy. And I'm also here with my grandson, Seamus, and my daughter, Hannah, and her husband, Ryan. And I also have another um, adult kid uh, named Martin. And um, I... I think a lot about, um, think a lot and worry a lot about what the world is going to be like when my grandchildren grow up. Um, I'm, it's kind of amazing what I've seen already, the changes in, um, you know, with fires and floods and drought and, um, yeah, I, I, I just wonder what the world will be like for them and I, I wish that there were, I know that there are things that we can do to help create a world where they'll be able to have clean water and good food and, you know, places to live. And, um, and I think there are lots of things that Vermonters can do. And I would also, I would like to see um, legislate, legislation that would help particularly older and low-income Vermonters um, create living situations where they could have um, zero emissions and weatherized homes and lower carbon footprints and to um, stop having to rely on fossil fuels. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kenzie Kalik. This is Zaid Kalik. And we live in Montpelier, Vermont. And my main message for climate change legislation is requesting to center marginalized communities, particularly migrant communities and black Vermonters, folks of color and queer families. So if there's climate change impacts the most marginalized the most and that um, whenever thinking about who to, to um, imagine as people who will benefit from legislation around climate change, those are the folks to think about. Thanks. Hi, my name is Courtney Forty. I'm from Jeffersonville, Vermont. This is my three-month-old daughter, Lumi. Um, we've already been impacted by the climate crisis, uh, just watching how the drought has impacted our garden this year, to see the different birds uh, that we're used to seeing in our backyard all of a sudden no longer there. Um, I worry so much about her future in just her short three months of life, uh, our relatives have been impacted by the fires in California. Her grandparents have been evacuated from the flooding in New York City. Um, it's just getting worse and it's so scary to have a young, young child and thinking about what her future will look like. Will there be resources? Will she be safe? As a parent, that's my number one concern and I think of all the things that I can protect her from and the climate crisis is one that I'm powerless without the support of our legislators uh, and all those making decisions that impact us now and in her future. Um, so I'm asking that the legislator, legislature decide uh, to support a just transition away from fossil fuels um, 
instead of protecting corporate interests, to really think about the people, hear our priorities, um, talk to Vermonters, listen to the young people. They're telling us that this is their future, this is their world, and time's up. Um, so I pray that we make the right decisions and for, for our children. Thank you. Thanks so much. My name is Ryan and I live in Plainfield. Um, this is my nine month old Ivy. And uh, one thing that is really important to me is uh, having clean drinking water. Um, I feel grateful to have a well that um, produces clean drinking water, but I'm fearful that that won't always be the case and know there are places, a lot of places in the world and increasingly so from climate change that um, don't have enough water. Um, and also the ability to produce food consistently. Um, we do a lot of food production at home um, for our family and keeping the root cellar and that um, being able to do that with the consistent weather and uh, enough water each year, but not too much is very important. So I'm concerned about that being threatened um, by climate change and about Ivy being able to grow up and drink clean water and produce enough food um, for herself. The Vermont legislature uh, needs to take really bold action on climate change. Um, that looks like uh, moving well beyond fossil fuels and also ensuring that there is a, a just transition so that um, every family and every nine month old has clean drinking water, access to healthy food um, and access to affordable housing. And so I hope the, that the legislature will uh, focus their climate goals to include all of those things. Thank you. Um, my name is Rebecca and I live um, on Abenaki land in what's called Northfield now. Um, and I've got one kid. Um, and one thing that is really uh, important to our family um, that's being impacted by climate change is spending time outside. We really love to garden and wander in meadows and woods and um, every year there's more and more ticks and we've had some scares with Lyme disease and um, it makes it a lot less, uh, it, it makes it a lot harder to, to be part of uh, the beautiful uh, landscape around us and feel connected to that. Um, I really hope that our leaders will hey. respond to the, the climate crisis with the urgency that it deserves and that they'll prioritize solutions that put BIPOC communities and low-income folks first. And I hope that they will do so in a way that accurately accounts for um, fossil fuels and renewable energy. That's it. Um, hi, I'm Heather. This is Sean and this is Luna. Luna's just under two years old. We live in South Royalton, Vermont. the Vermont's leader is that it's really important. It's the most important thing to create a climate plan that prioritizes people and not profits and that you think about my child and her generation and all of the people that are going to come after that and think about the generational injustice of the climate crisis um, when you're crafting your policy and um, make sure that you're, you're really creating a plan that counts all of our emissions that you know keeps carbon in the ground um, and that that is um, that's prioritizing the most vulnerable people in Vermont so that my daughter and everyone else that she knows can grow up in a world um, that feels safe and that they have access to food and nature and all of the wonderful things that that this world has to offer. My
I know that my life has been affected by climate change and the ones I love. My father's house in Nashville, Tennessee has been destroyed twice in the last 15 years. And he doesn't live near the river or the ocean, obviously. Um, and it's something that affects all of us, no matter where you are, what your demographic is, what your economic status is. Um, it's something that will affect the, you know, every single person on the entire planet. Hello. My name is Mira Isaac, and I grew up within 10 miles of this state house in the center of Vermont. And on beautiful days like today, the sun is so brilliant and amazing. And at first I'm thinking I should go inside and keep it away from me, right? Because the sun is bad, and with all the burning and fossil fuels and stuff, the destruction of our planet is coming quicker. And I asked the legislators if Please help set up some rules and regulations so that we can preserve this heavenly planet we live on and make the best of all of our natural sources of energy and just help to guide us to do things better, more smart, intelligent. That's the name of the game, and we've got the power, so. Please help me protect this planet by reducing all those fossil fuels that we don't need to consume. Thank you. So my, my name is Jackson. This is my granddaughter, Ivy. Uh, I have two daughters and two grandchildren, Ivy and Jamie. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed, I've noticed a lot of things uh, related to climate change. Um, but one thing that I would mention is the, uh, the collapse of the insect world. And uh, one of my fondest memories as a child was uh, seeing fireflies light up, the, light up the sky. And my worry is that my grandchildren aren't going to have that experience. Um, I mean, that's one of the many worries that I have. Uh, so I think in terms of uh, what we can do uh, to stay off or hopefully prevent it from getting worse uh, is keep our hands off of the uh, forest uh, and begin to adopt a forever wild attitude towards our forests and stop seeing them as commodities or resources that can be exploited. Uh, so that would be my message to the legislature. Uh, keep your hands off the forest. Let the forest do what the forests are meant to do. Clean the air, remove the carbon, and sustain the billions of species uh, that exist on this planet. Okay. All right, my name is Alyssa Eichler, and this is my daughter, Phoebe. I also have a, a two-year-old daughter named Renna. We live in Barrie, Vermont, which is also where I grew up. And I think it's so easy for Vermonters to feel like climate change is still far away. You know, we don't have the, the wildfires or the sea level rise right in our backyards. I think the effects that we're seeing are maybe somewhat more subtle, like our winters are changing, and now we have to deal with ticks in the summer that we're never here when I was a kid and you know humans are resilient so like for my daughters tick checks every day are going to be just part of life whereas it, you know it wasn't when I was a kid um, and that's good that we're resilient but I think that also can be a negative you know some wildlife like the Phoebes and the Wrens that my girls were named for they live near humans they maybe do fine but you know that's not the case for so many other species um, for instance I used to study 
tidal marsh sparrows, the salt marsh sparrow, and they nest in the coastal um, Atlantic, such as in Connecticut where I was working, and they're very likely to be one of the first species to go to extinct due to climate change because they nest on the ground um, in tidal marshes where flooding is already becoming more of an issue. And it was such a privilege to be able to work with them, but it's devastating to know that my daughters will probably never even get to see those birds. Okay. Um, my name is Marcy Buckner, and I live in Manchester, Vermont. And I have a, I'm a parent of four children and grandmother of one. And you know, climate change has been a very significant issue um, for our family. I have uh, children that work um, in the field of climate change, um, working very hard um, to uh, make, make the world a better place. Um, one thing that is particularly important to me is that my granddaughter be able to live in a world that is um, is not ridden by pollutants so that she and the rest of society can live a much healthier life um, for their future. Um, one other um, issue, I'm a psychotherapist and I see many, many people during the week and many of um, the people that I see have a great deal of anxiety about um, the future of um, society and how the climate has impacted um, their families with storms and um, horrible things that have been happening um, climate wise and greatly attribute it to climate change and fear that um, those that are in charge um, are not listening and so I hope that those that are the leaders are um, also considering making uh, more affordable um, access to things like solar power for um, families. Um, I mean, it's a small way that um, individuals can make a difference, but I've heard from some that it doesn't even seem like an affordable option. So I'm looking for ways um, that our Vermont, Vermont legislatures can make a difference in that area. Thanks. My name's Hannah, and this is Seamus, and I also have another daughter named Ivy, and we live in um, occupied Abenaki territory called Plainfield, Vermont. And as a mom, uh, the climate crisis has really hit home for me since becoming a mom. I um, just suddenly feel the urgency so much more in uh, worrying about what the future is going to be like for my kids. And it's so clear uh, this year, it feels really clear to me that the climate emergency is happening now. Um, I have friends in California who have lost their home to fires and um, family who are evacuated right now in Oregon because of fires. Um, and it's hard to, to sleep at night uh, holding my kids and wondering what is coming down the road. Um, and it's also really maddening because we have what we need right now to address this crisis and we just really need people to take action and to treat this like the emergency that it is um, and we really need bolder legislation. Um, you would like some milk? So one of the specific things that I would really love for Vermont leaders to do is um, look to universal weatherization, making sure that everybody has um, efficient housing and that they're able to stay warm in the winter and um, that people are really prioritized low income and marginalized populations in Vermont. Um, but across the board, I'm, I'm worried about everything with climate change, from the food that we're able to grow and the water that my kids have access to, um, to yeah, to species decline, all of it. And um, 
it is just so apparent with kids that we need to act now. And I don't want this crisis to be passed on to them any more than it already will be. So I really ask that people take action now. Thank you.